calculator out. So I'm going to input my two values so far. Oops. The calculator here that I'm using for this. First one plus 995 plus 103 of them. Let's do this one more time. Okay, we're going to clear this out. This time, we're at around a thousand or a thousand seventeen. Put that into here. So all three of them, I got three thousand and forty. I'm going to divide that by three. We took three readings. I'm doing this method. We're at. 1013 CFM. That's not so good for a three ton air conditioner. That's a little low. It's almost 200, 200 CFM low. All right. There's also another way you can check it. If I don't want to drill holes or anything, I use a filter rack. Now, I've never actually prepared the tube reading. We're going to do that now. So we'll see what it is. This is taking three averages, and if I use my filter rack, um, that may show to be close. I don't know. Let's take a look. Hold on. Let me get into that filter rack here. Now, one thing that's going to change it a little bit is that if we do it with the filter rack, well, obviously we're going to measure it without the filter. This is a pretty clean filter. Now, Anyways, what you're going to want to do now, you don't want to use the same measurement when you input your area and your meter. You can't use the same one here. Now you have to use what the actual hole is to cut inside the furnace. So we need to measure that. And this one's 23. It's 23 by 14, so they cut it pretty good. So if we take that and multiply that, 23. That was 14. That gives me 322 square inches. So I need to put that in here. I'll do that again real quick. All right. 322 inches. Scoot this up to 322 inches. Hold, 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 cycle through. Let's get to our timer. Let's to see. Okay, now what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn this thing on, and as, it, as it's running, I'm just going to kind of go in, all the way to the back. I'll scoot down, pull out. I'm going to kind of keep one continuous reading going. So let's go ahead and start off. Get to the top here. I'm going to start my timer. I'm going to kind of pull it and keep, make sure I keep it straight. Keep it moving. Coming down about an inch and a half. All the way to the back, drop it about an inch and a half. And a lot of times I do it this way, just because I don't have a return drop or something. I have no way of drilling a hole, or the homeowner don't want you drilling holes, whatever the case may be. I'll do it this way. See what this does. This time we took it right at about a right at about a minute reading. 
1246. That's almost what the book says. I think that's probably pretty accurate right there. But anyways, that's all you have to do to measure CFM. It doesn't take very long. You know, this tool here, uh, it's not very cheap, but you know, it's accurate. These are about $600. And the other method with the, with the uh, because of static pressure, uh, you can probably get the whole set up for about a hundred bucks. Uh, in another video, I'm going to show you how to take this CFM. And there's a formula to figure out the BTU output. Uh, but you have to know what the CFM is. So either method's going to work, it'll get you in the ballpark. Uh, if you ain't measuring, you're guessing. So let's start measuring these things, guys. We'll wrap this video up. First thing, I uh, said my drill is a Makita. It's not a Makita, it's a Milwaukee. It's not blue. Some of y'all probably think I'm an idiot, but it's actually a Milwaukee. Uh, when you go to cover these holes, you know, don't rip off little pieces of metal tape and slap it on there. It's ugly, doesn't look good. You can buy these little hole caps. Uh, basically just little plastic caps it's got little locks on them alright you can stick them in the ductwork right in there and that looks a whole lot neater they sell the little small ones here too I don't know if y'all can see that okay for the little holes for your static pressure tips and they sell all different sizes so Let's not stick metal tape on it. It looks a whole lot better with these on. It's more professional. Uh, another thing I want to go over my first CSM reading through the holes here with the filter in it. Manufacturer literature is calling for a 0.1 inch pressure drop across the filter. Well, I measured this filter. There's a 0.25 static pressure drop across it. So that's definitely going to lower my CFM. I did it again without the filter since I measured without the filter on the second attempt. And without the filter, I was within 35 CFM. Alright, so typically when I go to a house and I'm checking this, I always remove the filter because there's so many variances in filters, so many different types. So I, mean, I just I marry them without filters. But either way is going to be accurate enough. Uh, I personally like doing it in the filter rack. It's quicker. I don't have to drill holes. Lottie, lottie. Alright. But anyways, thanks. Uh, just please leave me some feedback. Let me know uh, if you like this. I'm going to try to do a couple other videos. I'm going to do some on maybe measuring static pressures across the filters so you can see what different filters, how restrictive they are. We can measure static pressure in return duct, static pressures in supply duct, across the coil. I mean, you can really do a lot of eliminating when it comes to airflow issues if you know how to do all this. It's not very hard. It takes a matter of maybe three, four, five minutes to measure all of them. It's a pretty quick process once you learn how to do it. Uh, but anyways, thanks a lot for watching. I'll talk to you in a bit.